Hello, my name is Blake within the Hyperloop. Right now, let's get into the Hyperloop pod and take off at 700 miles an hour. So, first I want to highlight a Hyperloop conference that's happening here in Colorado at uh, the School of Mines. And we are really excited because we'll be there for the cocktail reception the day before the conference. Unfortunately, we have to work, but um, it's a great conference and uh, they are providing a Zoom live webinar for both days. Um, again, it's by the HARP Hyperloop Advanced Research Partnership, a nonprofit. Um, they've had a couple other conferences, one in New York City and one in LA. The overview of the conference um, is some pretty interesting big players. Uh, of note is the US Department of Transportation, a former counselor to the US Department of Transportation, um, and then Bebop from Hyperloop TT, and then Ryan from Transpod, um, the chief technology officer. Um, lots of uh, discussions about right of way. Um, the Colorado Department of Transportation Executive Director, uh, Shanana Lu, will be there, which is really interesting from a uh, local perspective of what Hyperloop means. And they get into safety, and then Hyperloop and human environment. Um, then the next day, physics of Hyperloop, um, active progress, Hyperloop routes, feasibility studies and reaction, and then making Hyperloop a reality panelists, and then the HARP uh, uh, you know, conference ends. So looking forward to uh, remotely viewing the conference, which is only a couple miles away from here, but um, really glad that uh, HARP is organizing these Hyperloop events. Next, um, Hyperloop Connected, which is a student initiative of Delft Hyperloop um, on bringing the thought pieces and the, the, you know, a lot of interesting articles of what Hyperloop means. They've subdivided it into implementation, pod and vehicle, and infrastructure categories. You can subscribe to their newsletter. Um, you can even submit an article um, if you want. And I've really found uh, this extremely well written. Um, I really liked the I report about the future of Hyperloop, um, Eurotube, which is building infrastructure for vacuum transportation, uh, submitted an article. Um, challenges like seriously really fun, um, the societal impact of Hyperloop. Um, so reach out to them if you want to get in touch. Again, thanks uh, Delft Hyperloop for putting this together. Um, it's a huge resource for the community. Um, next, we're going to go to SwissPod. They just unveiled a uh, promotional video, so let's take a look. When you look at transport today, there's an obvious disconnect. In an era that venerates instant gratification, how we travel, how we move about our planet seems stuck in the past. And we think it is time for a long overdue upgrade. Back in the 1970s, an initiative dubbed Swiss Metro, co-founded by visionary Marcel Jouffer, proposed a network of high-speed trains traveling through Back tubes the between 70s. the major cities of Switzerland. Fast forward a few decades, Elon Musk releases a white paper titled Hyperloop Alpha in 2012. And SwissPod Soon after SpaceX is from EPFL Loop. Competitions where teams representing corresponding academic institutions but it's a new startup and comprised company. entirely of students would design and develop their own Hyperloop pods. One of those teams was the Lausanne, Switzerland-based EPF Loop, who would go on to first place in their capsule designs regard to safety and third and maximum speed. The Hyperloop capsule conceived by Swiss Pod. This is uh, their render of their Swiss Pod that is just uh, a couple, uh, a month old or so. Um, really interesting. It's quite large. Again, we're seeing this uh, pod levitate from the bottom um, instead of heart hyperloops from the Netherlands levitating from the top. Um, linear induction motor, um, active levitation, lateral stability mechanisms so it doesn't shift left and right, um, and pressurized vessel. Can autonomously transport up to 30 human passengers, enabling tops. So, uh, Geneva to Zurich in 17 minutes, and it, I really like this render a lot. Um, you can see this weird kind of spidery uh, network for the shell, um, all of those seats, um, some other technical information. I think maybe those are battery packs. I'm not exactly sure. We haven't seen uh, a good breakdown of their tech, but speeds of up to 1,200 kilometers an hour. 
And it looks like all those seats were facing one direction. <laughs> Let's say Mark, so. who lives in Zurich, and his sister Jessie, who lives in Geneva, are planning to meet up. 17 minutes later, the speaker announces that they have arrived in Geneva. Our passenger capsule is immune to adverse weather conditions and has absolutely no carbon footprint to speak of. If you'd like to take part in this historical adventure, with your helpful contributions, we can design, develop, and deploy our Hyperloop vessels and infrastructure to connect the nation of Switzerland and Switzerland to the world. You can visit our new website at www.swisspod.ch and our social media channels, or contact us by email with questions, comments, or feedback. I love this final ending. Yeah, so that's great um, that they're um, working really hard. Um, this sounds like some type of uh, marketing video as well. Um, by the end, they're, they're asking us to contact them if um, you want to help out. So definitely reach out to them. Let's see if uh, SwissBod.ch is live. They were undergoing a little bit of construction um, before, so we're just going to check it out uh, to see if the website's live again. Oh, it's still getting ready for maintenance. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so good job, SwissPod. Um, now we're going to go to Tomb Hyperloop. Um, this is the VAR Hyperloop group that got renamed um, in Munich. And this video is of a test track that they've built um, and they've tested their pod. This was just released about four hours ago. I hope you didn't blink. Yep, that's pretty badass. And then we also found another video um, from user Kirin SK, and uh, he shot a little bit, let a little bit of a longer video. Can't believe what was just mere metal, carbon fiber, nuts and bolts, electronics, batteries, and power uh, to power this mini beast to have a successful test run on our test track is just bliss. And it stops really fast. I can't believe how fast it was going and then it just stopped. Whoa, that's awesome. So congratulations to him and thanks for uh, releasing this <laughs> video and sharing this video on, on so for the world to get excited about your pod. Um, and again, they won pretty much all the SpaceX pod competition. <laughs> events so looking forward to seeing them next is queen's hyperloop um, from uh, toronto really exciting i'm glad that they're still working hard they've released a new blog post um, on their website here and i would have you check it out give their team some support um, they have a nice um, transpod render of the hyperloop tube going into toronto and um, you know just kind of giving what is hyperloop uh, why is it interesting? Why is it the next future? Um, so yeah, 80 plus students working. Um, it's really nice to see that they're laying out and thinking about uh, the case for Hyperloop. And yeah, give it a read. Next, uh, we're going to go to Transpo or Hyperloop TT, sorry. Um, really interesting in that the uh, uh, Department of Transportation has created a subcommittee um, that we talked about in, a, in our previous video. I believe it's called NTT. I'll have to look that up. But um, this subcommittee uh, apparently has toured uh, Hyperloop TT's test track in Toulouse, France. And they got to see the pumping station for uh, their full scale tube. So that's really interesting that the committee's already going to check out. Um, different locations that Hyperloop is being built to kind of get a, 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 an idea. And Mr. Beepop just released this an hour ago of more photos from the meeting. Unfortunately, I don't know many of these people in the photos, but um, really nice to see that they're showcasing and being transparent to technology. And these committees will be the ones deciding how uh, the federal government works with uh, Hyperloop companies. So that's cool. Um, next. The Hyperloop One, Virgin Hyperloop One, had an event on the Hill talking to some of these committee meetings, uh, committee uh, chair people, um, 
with the Department of Transportation and other uh, legislators uh, at the federal level and their um, you know, constituent services uh, staff members. And this video um, is just kind of a recap. It was also highlighting all the perspective routes Hyperloop One. Today's an incredible day. Virgin Once Hyperloop the... One has built an entirely oh. new transportation system. And we're here in the capital today, actually joined by a number of states from across the country, all of whom want to be the first place that will have a Hyperloop system in the United States. So Chicago, We've already demonstrated that Hyperloop works. Texas, Our Missouri, test facility in Nevada, Nevada. Israel is functioning. What we're really about now is real projects. We are in Washington, D.C., sharing our Hyperloop corridor of the Midwest uh, with uh, legislators here on Capitol Hill. We're She's connecting with the Chicago Ohio. to Columbus and Pittsburgh. Within one day's drive time, we reach over 50% of the U.S. and parts of Canada. So imagine what that could do if we had Hyperloop. Cool. And on Virgin Hyperloop One's uh, YouTube channel, there was uh, some further information, so go check it out. And that concludes uh, today's In the Hyperloop uh, News Pod. Um, feel free to reach out if you're liking these or um, if you want uh, to share a news story um, or if you have any other comments, so stay in the loop.